We will talk about another mountain of the mountains of the companions. May Allah be pleased with them. We will talk about one of those whom the Prophet ﷺ gave them the glad tidings that they are in paradise. We'll talk about Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. May Allah be pleased with him. It was said that his name was Abd Amr, and some say it's Abdul Harith, and others say that it was Abdul Kaaba. And the Prophet ﷺ changed his name into Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. It took on Islam and accepted the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a time that the Muslims were propagating Islam secretly due to the persecution and the tortures of the disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the person that used to propagate this da'wah, that used to call people to Islam secretly was Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him. Abu Bakr had to recognize people that had good reputation and they had good characters and ethics and morals. And one of the people he recognized these characteristics in was Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. And indeed, when Abu Bakr went to him and he presented to him the message of Islam due to his good characters, ethics, and morals, and reputation, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf he accepted Islam immediately. And he was so happy with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to announce his Islam in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was young, he was not so wealthy. He accepted Islam at a very early age. In fact, it is reported that he was 10 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was from amongst the top eight to accept Islam. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, he accepted Islam prior to the Muslims going into the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. He was one of those who struggled at the hands of the Kuffar of Quraysh. The disbelievers had harmed those who had accepted Islam initially, and from amongst them was this particular man, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. This companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he stayed and kept company with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, learning Islam, migrating to Ethiopia for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala. When the torture became too much, the persecution was too much. However, even though they escaped from torture, persecution, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, may Allah be pleased with him could not take to be away from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he came back again to Mecca in order to be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the revelation came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to emigrate to Medina, Abdul Rahman Ibn Auf was one of the ones that decided to emigrate with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Medina. But his emigration or his migration to Medina was a unique migration. In the sense that Abdul Rahman Ibn Auf in prior to Islam and in Islam was a serious businessman. When he decided to migrate to Medina, the Kuffar Quraysh, they said, okay, Abdul Rahman bin Auf, if you want to go and join Muhammad and the Muslims of Medina, you could go, but you're not going to take the economy of Mecca with you to Medina. That's how rich it was. His wealth could change the economy of a whole country. If you want to go, go, but leave your wealth behind in Mecca. So Abdul Rahman bin Auf, all this wealth which he had amassed and worked hard for, he had a choice, either to stay in Mecca with his wealth or to emigrate to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet and the Muslims of Medina. So he decided to leave every single penny, left all his wealth in Mecca to go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslims in Medina. Upon reaching Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seeing the state of Abdul Rahman bin Auf and the state of those who were called Muhajiri, those who migrated, so Abdul Rahman bin Auf, he arrived in Medina penniless, destitute. And he said about himself that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took one of the Ansar, the people of Medina, to be my brother. He formed a bond of brotherhood between me and another Sahabi called Rabi'. This companion, he looked at Abdul Rahman bin Auf and he looked at his situation, a destitute person. And he said to him, The people of Medina know that I am the most wealthiest person among them and that is my wealth and my money half of it is yours and they also know that i have two wives look at them and choose the one you like most and i'll divorce her and once she 
is out of her waiting period, you can marry her. And this is definitely something from out of this world. One would say that this is not human. This shows how a great believer, Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah was, may Allah be pleased with him. Abdurrahman on the other end was not a person to take the chance. Abdurrahman was an honorable companion, was a man of honor. He valued this offer and he cherished his brother in Islam. He said, may Allah bless your wealth and bless your wives, but show me where the market is. He went to the marketplace, wherever he could find, wherever he could find some wood, some rope, he went to the marketplace immediately. Because Abdurrahman bin Awf, he never gave up hope. He took these things, he went to the market. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not see him for a while. And once he saw him, after a while, he saw some marks on his face, some type of makeup that the men used to wear when they get married. So the Prophet asked him, what is this Abdurrahman? He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, I got married. Subhanallah, this is a person that arrived as a destitute, a marriage, it cost in those days. He had to pay the dowry and everything. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him, what did you give her as dowry, Abdurrahman? He said, he gave her a certain amount of gold. At this, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled and he said to him, Follow the sunnah of doing a walima. Abdurrahman bin Awf, he took the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he had a feast for his wedding. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam made a dua for Abdurrahman ibn Awf. May Allah grant you blessings, barakah in your wealth and in your family. Because he got married in the correct way. He was married when he did not really own much. Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he says, that dua upon the occasion of my marriage that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had gave me was so powerful, so powerful that wallahi the world came to my feet. And he says, if I moved a stone, I would find underneath it gold or silver. This was Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He took part in the battle of Badr and he did well. He took part in the battle of Uhud and he did very well. But as for his wealth, he earned so much, he became so wealthy that he was one of those whom when the caravans were seen far away from Medina, they immediately knew this is the caravan of Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He was one of those who competed with Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh. He had so much of wealth, even Uthman ibn Affan once saw the caravan of Abdurrahman ibn Awf when he was returning from his own journey. He looked at it and he said, that is a man whom Allah has blessed with a lot of wealth. Yet when he made hijrah, he had absolutely nothing. When he got married, he had very little. The first amount that he ever earned, he got married with. But money was not in his heart. Money was in his hands. And that is why he was generous. It was reported that in one single day, he freed 30 slaves of his for the sake of Allah. He did not wear fancy clothes or ride fancy rides. He was a normal Muslim. He had the honor of the Prophet ﷺ praying behind him. The Prophet ﷺ was once in one of the battles or he was once trying to reconcile between two disputing factions or two disputing tribes and he was late and it was time for prayer. And it was said that it was Fajr prayer. So it was almost sunrise. And they were waiting for the Prophet, but he did not show up, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Bilal, the one calling for the Adhan, said, Okay, what do you want us to do? So Abdul Rahman said, Call for prayer. And he led the prayer. He prayed one rak'ah, and then came the Prophet, Alayhi Salatu Salam, and he joined the congregation and he prayed one rak'ah with Abdurrahman and then completed his prayer. So this is an honor that was only to be given to Abdurrahman bin Awf, may Allah be pleased with him, and to Abu Bakr before that, may Allah be pleased with them all. Only these two companions whom the Prophet ﷺ had prayed behind them. Abdurrahman ibn Awf, may Allah be pleased with him, was also one of the knowledgeable companions of the Prophet ﷺ. It was reported that when Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, went in one of his travels to 
the north of Arabia to Asham, this area was struck by plague. So they did not know what to do. And in comes Abdurrahman ibn Awf, may Allah be pleased with him. And he said, what's the issue? He wasn't there, he was somewhere else. And when they told him, he said, in this case, I will tell you what I've heard from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you hear of the plague in a city, in an area, do not go into it. And if the plague strikes in an area where you are inhabiting, where you are living, then you must not go out of it. So this, in short, is the quarantine that the Prophet ﷺ had set to protect the people. In one of the greatest battles in which the Prophet ﷺ needed a lot of donations, that this donation that was received by the Prophet ﷺ was so amazing, Subhanallah, that Umar radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, said about these donations, that on this particular day, the donation for myself was so large, I thought I would do Abu Bakr. Well, you know what Umar gave for donation? He gave half of his wealth, half of everything he earned. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, he gave every single thing he owned for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet the donation was not enough. So now they needed more donation. Then came forth Abdurrahman bin Awf. He came forth with a bag full of so much gold, he, he put it on the lap of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Umar, he said, even though people have been donating half of their wealth, everything they earned, he said this donation of Abdurrahman bin Awf was so great that he thought to himself, Abdurrahman bin Awf had committed some kind of sin, he wanted to make some expiation. But it was not that. It was a person he gave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had a piece of land that he sold for 40,000 dinars. A dinar is a gold coin. And when he received the amount, he went out looking for the family of the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amina binti Wahab. He was from the same clan as well. And he went to her relatives and he gave them a healthy amount each. And he went to each one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave them a gift, an amount each. And he went looking for the poor. The poor did not have to ask Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He knew who they were. He had a relationship with them. He went out to them and he always considered it an honor to be spending upon the poor. Then there is the famous story similar to that of Uthman ibn Affan and Talha ibn Ubaidillah. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all and us too. Where 700 camels had entered Medina full of stock, full of wealth, full of merchandise, food and so many other things. And Aisha radiallahu anha asked, why are the people of Medina so excited? So she was told that that is Abdurrahman ibn Awf. His caravan of 700 camels has just entered Medina. So she made a dua. She said, may Allah grant him barakah in whatever he has got in this world. But what he is going to get in the hereafter is far greater and far better. So when he heard this dua, he was so touched by it. He rushed to Aisha radiallahu anha and he said, Oh Aisha, oh my beloved mother, I make you bear witness that all these 700 camels and whatever they hold are given for the benefit of the Muslims of Medina Munawwara. Anyone who is needy, please come and help yourselves. He decided, I am the one who's going to look after the wives of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he traveled with them wherever they went. He ensured that he had the best of camels for them. And he made sure that they rode on those beautiful camels where he had put great mats and mattresses. And he had the coverings of those camels in the most beautiful way so that they would be protected from the sun. And he ensured that he was at their service wherever they went, whenever they went, wherever they went. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him goodness. The wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had so much respect for this man. They trusted him so much. They knew that this Abdurrahman ibn Awf has been truthful to his promise to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he has spent on them so much so that we will come to learn what he did in his will and who he bequeathed his wealth for. Subhanallah. Let's listen to what happened. Close to his death, he started freeing his slaves one by one, and what happened? He wrote all those who took part in the battle of Badr and they have remained, they are alive 
each one of them should get 400 gold coins and they were 100 of them which means 40,000 gold coins were given at the time that Abdurrahman ibn Auf died distributed to those who were the remainder of the people who took part in the battle of Badr then they found that he had left a large amount of wealth for each one of the remainders of the wives of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and on top of that subhanallah he left wealth for so many other for so many other good causes and then they looked at what he left for his family 1000 camels they found 100 stallions this was after they had given whatever was already bequeathed 3000 sheep and then he had four wives they had to share one eighth between them which means they were getting approximately three and a half percent of his wealth when they counted three and a half percent of his wealth to give each one of those four women they each got 80,000 gold coins subhanallah subhanallah which makes it approximately 2.4 million gold coins that he had left Abdul Rahman ibn Auf what a man what a man and yet subhanallah this was the dua simplicity of marriage and that is the occasion upon which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua it is reported that once he was seated and he began to cry because it was the time of breaking his fast and there was so much food in front of him they asked him oh Abba Muhammad why are you crying he said wallahi I'm thinking of Mus'ab ibn Umair we buried him and there was nothing to cover him properly and I'm thinking of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the best of creation and the Nabi of Allah, the Prophet of Allah. He never had food like this that is in front of me. And I fear that perhaps Allah might be giving me this in my life. I hope he gives me something in paradise as well. And he called the people and he let them share from his food because he could not eat alone. He was a simple man. At his deathbed, he said, I fear that perhaps I will be delayed in joining the rest of the companions because I've had so much wealth. I need to give account for everything that I have. So Aisha radiallahu anha made him the main offer. The offer which was the cherry on the cake for Abdurrahman ibn Auf. She said, Oh Abdurrahman, I offer you to be buried next to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and my father and Umar ibn al-Khattab. I offer you to be buried in my own home. He turned down the offer. He did not want to be known as a person of that rank. He knew that the simplicity would grant him Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and may he grant us all at least a little bit of barakah in our wealth. He died, may Allah be pleased with him, on the 32nd year of Al Hijrah. One of his greatest achievements was to choose Uthman to be the ruler of the believers. And he could have asked for it for himself, but he didn't. He gave it to Uthman, and after Uthman came Ali. And all of them were among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah be pleased with them all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.